Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things for fishing up here in the northeast and that is going to be spinning rods. I know a lot of people don't like spinning rods. I absolutely love them. Up here if you fish in the northeast they're an absolute necessity and I've fished with a ton of them for all different types of techniques. Largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, it does not matter. I've caught a ton of bass on a spinning rod up here and I think I've really narrowed it down to the one spinning rod that is an absolute necessity no matter where you fish in the country. You gotta have a setup like this. So today we're gonna break down how I choose everything on this setup. Whether you're just getting into fishing and you're looking for your first fishing combo, this would be where I would start. Whether you are looking to add a spinning rod to your arsenal for bank fishing, fishing in the south, fishing in the northeast, wherever, everything you need to know about spinning rods will be broken down in today's video. So we're gonna start with the rod, we're gonna jump into the reel, and lastly, we're gonna talk about the line, which is very important. And then we'll even talk a little bit about what kind of techniques you can do with this, um, but it just really opens up your fishing. This is. As everyone knows, the spinning rod is excellent for finesse fishing techniques. That's almost always what I use it for. I know a lot of people don't like to finesse fish, but there are times that it just really works. Whether you fish pressured bodies of water or you're fishing for smallmouth bass, those finesse fishing techniques just absolutely catch a ton of fish. And if you're just looking to go out there, have some fun, catch some fish, a spinning rod is the place to be. So let's break it down in today's video. Stay tuned and let's get right into it. So let's start with the rod first. It's probably one of the most important pieces of equipment for this whole setup. Uh, it's gonna give you that versatility that you're looking for and allow you to fish different techniques if you choose this correctly. This rod right here, you will never be able to purchase because this is a custom rod that I build myself. When I said I've gone through a lot of spinning rods and tried a ton of different lengths and actions, I mean it. I've even built many myself. This is probably my fifth or sixth one I've built myself to try and find the perfect spinning rod. However, you do not need to build your own spinning rod to get the perfect action. I just wanted to tweak a couple things and honestly I wanted to build one that looked really cool um, so that's what we did I fish with them a lot I wanted to have something that looked pretty cool but in the description below will be linked a rod that is very comparable to this you will be able to check that one out and it will have pretty much the same specs that I built this rod too so it's almost the exact same rod just commercially available this rod right here is a seven foot medium power fast action spinning rod and you're probably thinking that's the most basic setup ever and that's the point you want to be able to do a lot of stuff with this uh, it might not be the best drop shot rod it might not be the best ned rig rod but it can do everything i've built five or six spinning rods and this purple one is the one that i reach for nine times out of ten no matter what technique i'm fishing i have other ones i've literally built a drop shot rod has special blended graphite in it. It's six foot nine. It has a super extra fast tip so you can feel everything, but it has the backbone to set the hook, everything like that. I still reach for this one more. It just really allows me to do everything on the water. It feels good in the hand. It doesn't feel like a tiny wimpy rod that you're gonna get whooped if you hook a big fish on. Uh, it still has a little bit of mass to it. It's just overall one of my favorite rods. The fast action is going to allow you to do all those different techniques. You can still drop shot with it. You're gonna have the sensitivity you need, but you can still cast those really light lures. Um, it might not be the best like hair jig rod. I know a lot of people like to fish a hair jig for smallmouth. So a seven foot six rod would be ideal for that with a lighter action because then you can get that whip to throw that hair jig. Uh, but you could put it on this rod and fish it just fine and it would be able to do the same thing. You just might not get as far as a cast as somebody else. Uh, I skip docks with wacky rigs with this rod. It just allows me to do everything I need when it comes to bass fishing with a spinning rod, those finesse fishing techniques. This rod right here is rated from like six to 12 pound test. You'll see a lot of these rods are rated from different line pound test. I don't really follow that as much. I check more of the lower rating. The line test, if you find one that's four to 10 pound, or you find one that's eight to 15 pound, it's probably gonna be very comparable to this rod. Um, they're very, very similar in that aspect. What you want to look for is your lure rating. And this one is very important. Mine goes from a one eighth to a one half ounce. Anything in there is going to be perfect. I can fish a lot of very light Ned rigs with that one eighth ounce technique. Or if I go up to Lake Erie and I'm drop shotting in 25, 30 foot of water, 
I can put a 3 8 ounce drop shot weight on here and still fish it just fine and it's not gonna overload the rod. Spinning rods, you don't wanna overload them as much like you can on a bait caster. So where a bait caster might be rated to a one ounce lure, and you can put an ounce and a quarter lure on there and nothing's gonna happen. Those rods are built much stiffer. They have more of a backbone to them. If you put something overloaded on a spinning rod, the tip is more your concern. It cannot handle those heavier baits and you'll break spinning rods a lot easier if you overload them. So you don't wanna do that. Anything, I've seen rods a 1 16th to like a 3 8 or a 3 16th to a half anything in that range is going to be good too. Just take a look at that lure rating. I would probably suggest somewhere in the 1 8 to 3 16th ounce range being that lower end and somewhere in the 3 8 to half ounce being that higher end. You don't wanna go down to a 1 16th and you don't, probably don't wanna go anything. I've seen some that are rated up to 5 8 or even 3 quarters. If you get something in that range or the lower range, it's either gonna to be too light in the backbone or it's gonna to be too stiff in the tip. Uh, and it won't be as versatile as one of those spinning rods with that 1 8 to half ounce or 3 8 ounce range. So that's what you're looking for in your rod setup. And the seven foot is going to allow you to make a little bit farther cast when you need to, but it's not too long that you can't make accurate casts around cover or docks. I don't recommend going to a six foot six or six foot nine. And I don't recommend going longer to like a seven foot three or seven foot six. They both do their own things. One's more accurate and one casts farther. And if you wanna learn more about that, I'll link a video at the end of today where I talked about what the different uh, specs on a rod do and how to choose the correct rod. But a seven foot is that perfect middle ground that will allow you to do a little bit of everything. Jumping into the reel here, this is gonna be the most simple piece of equipment on your rod. I will link the same one that I have on here just because I believe this is the best budget spinning reel out there. This is the Shimano Sedona. Uh, this is the 2500 size. You could use a 3000 if you really wanted to. Um, that would be the range that I would go. I wouldn't go any smaller. You're not gonna get enough line capacity. And if you actually have a smaller spool, it doesn't cast as far. <laughs> I wouldn't go bigger either because then you're gonna have too big of a reel and it's gonna be too cumbersome to use. I like my spinning rods to still be a little bit lightweight. So that 25 to 3000 size is going to be perfect. Also, if you have a bigger spool, if you like a, a looser drag or you have fish that pull really hard, the 3000 size will actually have a smoother drag because you have a bigger spool that's easier to spin. So the bigger the spool, the easier the drag spins and the further it'll cast, but they start to weigh a lot more. So 2,500, 3,000 size, that's where I like to be. To be honest, I would fish a 3000 on here, but I don't like the handle that comes on the Shimano Sedona 3000s. I prefer this handle instead, so that's why I went with the 2500. But personal preference there, take your pick on one of those sizes and that seven foot medium power rod, and you're gonna be golden with that setup right there. Last thing you're gonna need to do is put some line on here, and you'll notice that I love to fish braid on my spinning reels. This is lime green suffix 832, in 15 pound test. That's the only line I will fish on any of my spinning reels. You could pick up any one of the spinning reels out of my boat. It will have that same line on it. I will not have one with straight fluorocarbon, monofilament, low vis green braid. You will not see any spinning reels with any of that stuff on there. Here's the reason why. First thing, this lime green braid is going to give you that visibility. So if you're fishing docks or a finesse fishing technique, you'll be able to see when a fish picks that bait up, you'll see the line jump, you'll see it move left or right. And I've done a video on this line many a times, uh, but that is the main advantage to having that lime green braid. If you're worried about the fish seeing it, what I do is I will tie a 10 to 15 foot fluorocarbon leader on the end here down to my actual lure. I don't have anything on here right now, but I'll have about a 10 to 15 foot fluorocarbon leader, and that is where you get versatility with the braid. So I can put 15 pound test braid on here that's a very abrasion resistant and heavy pound test line, and I can fish around heavy cover and just change out my fluorocarbon leader to whatever pound test I need to land the fish. So if I'm in really clear water on Lake Erie, I can throw a six pound test on here and I don't have to re-spool it allowing me to use one spinning combo. Or if I'm going up shallow and fishing for largemouth, I can go to 10 or 12 pound test, still only need one spinning combo. 
you can change out your fluorocarbon leader and leave the main line the same and it will work perfect. The last thing that braid is going to do for you is increase your sensitivity to the max on this combo. While you already have a sensitive rod, you picked it out for sensitive fishing and using those finesse fishing baits, that braided line gives you that last little touch because there's no stretch in this. So if a fish bites your line, you will know immediately. If it's pulling the wacky rig, you will know immediately. You'll be able to see it move. You'll be able to feel it move. If you're using a bait that you're connected to, like a small Texas rig or a drop shot, you'll be able to feel a fish pick that bait up down there on the bottom. You'll know instantly if you have a fish on there. So don't worry about the lime green part. They will not see it with the fluorocarbon and the rest of the advantages come from having that braid on there and being able to change out your fluorocarbon leader. I promise you it is an absolute necessity to do this. I've done it for years. I changed a while back, started trying this, saw a bunch of the pros doing it and I will never go back to straight fluorocarbon again. Uh, this is absolutely the way to go. It allows you not only to be versatile and have one spinning combo, but I firmly believe it will catch you more fish at the end of the day. Um, I've noticed many times where I've picked up some subtle bites or caught some extra fish just because of that braided line. So give this combo a try. It's one of my favorites. I catch a ton of fish every year on a spinning rod. You'll see that a ton coming up on my channel this year. Can't wait to get out there and be fishing again. And if you enjoyed today's video and want to see another video talking about the best bait caster setup, go ahead and check this video out right here. Hit that like button down below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching.